I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is Jen Easterly. She is the director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Jen, it is wonderful to have you on Floor Talk. Thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, it's great to be here. So now, Jen, tell me about the agency and your role. Yeah. So a lot of people may not have heard of CISA because we're the newest agency in the federal government. But we were actually stood up four years ago to be America's cyber defense agency. So our mission is to lead the national effort to understand, manage, and reduce risk to the cyber and physical infrastructure that Americans rely on every hour of every day to get gas at the pump and money from the ATM and food from the grocery store and power and water. So it's all about protecting and defending those networks and systems and data that underpin our daily lives. And it's important to remember that those network systems and data are largely not owned by the government. They're owned and operated by the private sector and it's why coming to places like this and spending time with the private sector is so important because it's all about collective cyber defense of our nation. All right, now tell me, how vulnerable is the financial sector to cyber attacks? So I think we need to keep in mind that all of infrastructure is vulnerable. We live in a highly connected world, and so given that connections, given the vulnerabilities, given those points of failure, sure, finance is very vulnerable. Vulnerable because, as the saying goes, that's where the money is. So it's a place where nation states may come after the financial sector, but it's also a place where cyber criminals and things like ransomware can come and affect how people react to uh, having to pay a ransom. They think that, oh, finance has the money so we can go after the financial services sector. Now, I will say, having spent four and a half years at Morgan Stanley, I have great confidence in the security and resilience of the financial services sector because this sector has made incredible investments in keeping the nation's financial infrastructure secure. And so while I do worry about nation state and cyber criminal actors coming after the financial services system, I also look at this sector as a model for what the other sectors should be doing in terms of investing in process and technology and people to keep everybody confident that their money is safe and secure. Now, do you have any advice for business leaders on how they can implement better cybersecurity across their organizations? Yes, thanks for asking that question. So first off, I think all business leaders, all CEOs need to see cyber risk as not the job of the IT people, but cyber risk as core business risk, like liquidity risk and equity risk and franchise risk. Cyber risk can have a really material impact on your business, on your reputation, and if you're part of critical infrastructure, which basically all big businesses are, could have an impact on our economic prosperity, our, na our national security, our public health and safety. So all CEOs should treat cyber risk as a business risk and they need to empower, empower their chief information security officers, empower their security teams, make sure that they're not always saying security versus business, I'm gonna focus on business because oftentimes the risks out there mean that if you are prioritizing business versus security, you are undermining your ability to be able to serve your clients and serve your customers and keep their data and their money safe. Now, why is collaboration between industry and government important for cybersecurity? Great question. So it goes back to the point that critical infrastructure is largely owned and operated by the private sector. So this is not something that the government is going to solve. And cybersecurity, frankly, is not something that has an endpoint. This is something that we need to manage like any other risk that we're focused on reducing. And so the only way we can do this is for the government to work hand in hand with the private sector. It's why at CISO we established what's called the JCDC, or Joint Cyber Defense Collaborative. You can remember it because it's like ACDC, but with a J. I'm a big 80s rock and roll fan. <laughs> so I had to come up with something that sounded uh, like good rock music. Mm -hmm. but. Essentially what it does is it brings together on one platform the entire federal government cyber ecosystem, so CISA, NSA, FBI, US Cybercom, on one platform so you don't need a PhD in government to figure out how to interact with the government. You can come to CISA through the Joint Cyber Defense Collaborative, JCDC, and you can work with us to ensure that 
you can get information from us about what we're seeing from a government perspective, but oftentimes it is that private in industry that is seeing malicious and suspicious activity first because they are seeing it on their own network. So if they bring information to us, we can be responsive, we can put those pieces of the puzzle together, connect those dots and drive down risk to the nation. It's all about collective cyber defense for our nation. So really, really important that we all embrace this and take accountability and responsibility for what we can do for national security. All right, well, Jen Easterly, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Thank you so much. Thanks it's for joining great me. Great to be here, I really appreciate it.